This is an unusual layout. It combines Lionel 00 trains with Marklin HO. Marklin is a German manufacturer famous for both trains and toys. Lionel is the oldest American maker of toy trains, but Marklin is the oldest maker of toy trains in the world. They introduced their first toy train, a clockwork set, in the early 1890s. Originally, we built the Lionel 00 layout for our Century of Lionel video, which we produced for Lionel's 100th anniversary. The layout measured four by six feet and had two loops of 00 track. Lionel introduced 00 gauge in 1938. 00 was smaller than O gauge, and Lionel wanted to offer a line of trains to customers who were cramped for space. I got the idea to add a lower level with three loops of Marklin HO. We also were able to fit a loop of Marklin HO on the upper level outside of the two double O loops. We built a tunnel at one end and a viaduct at the other. So now we can run three trains on the top level and three on the lower level. A Marklin magnetic crane is able to pick up a car from a Lionel 00 hopper on the upper level and load it in a Marklin flat car on the lower level. I would say that is on the cool side. Marklin makes trains based mostly on European prototypes, like this 462 steamer and these two electrics. The big 2662 electric is called the Crocodile. It is Marklin's most famous locomotive. But Marklin also makes trains for the American market, like this Milwaukee Road F7, and this beautiful model of the Union Pacific Big Boy. They also make a handsome model of the classic war bonnet paint scheme of the Santa Fe. You don't see a Marklin crocodile and Big Boy operating on the same layout very often. Trains over in Europe look different from their American counterparts. This is a tank car in Europe. This is a tank car in America. A European steamer. An American steamer. European boxcar. American boxcar. European electric. American electric. On our next video, we'll show you step by step how we built this layout. In part 12, we showed you an unusual layout that combined Lionel 00 with Marklin HO. And we said in our next show, which is this show, we'd show you how we built it. Well, we keep our word, here's how we built it. This is what it looked like when we started. It measured four by six feet and had two loops of Lionel 00. We added a loop of HO on the top level and added a 12 inch wide shelf attached to the bottom of the two by four framework. This allowed us to run three parallel loops of HO on the new bottom level. We laid down some sample curves, then we cut the corners to match the outside curve. 
To deaden the sound, we screwed down one half inch homosote. We added foam core to the sides to provide a surface for the plaster and used a hot knife to cut thin layers of styrofoam for texture. Next, we applied a rough mixture of plaster to the foam core and styrofoam. Then we spray painted it and added some shrubbery and ground cover. To make the tunnel, we cut two tunnel portals out of one fourth inch plywood, then shaped chicken wire in the rough form of a mountain. We dipped some heavy duty paper towels into a thin mixture of plaster and draped them over the chicken wire. For the curves, we used newspaper dipped in the plaster. We glued three inch thick styrofoam to the edge of the table, then shaped the styrofoam with a hot knife. Now our mountain tunnel was ready for painting. It's fun working with this plaster as you can't make a mistake. Mountains and rocks come in every shape imaginable. At the other end of the layout, we wanted to install a viaduct with suspension bridges. So, we cut a 30 inch section out of the one by 12 shelf, dropped it about 12 inches, then added one inch and three inch thick slabs of styrofoam to fill the gap. We shaped the sides with a hot knife and added plaster for texture. As I said, you can't make a mistake duplicating rock formations. Then we spray painted using flat earth tones. We placed two Scenic Express HO viaducts side by side. Then added two Marklin suspension bridges to the top of the viaducts. After adding more ground cover, shrubbery, and trees, our layout was ready for the camera. After you finish with the scenery, it's fun to watch the trains run around. But you always get a new idea or want to add something new or see some area you can improve. I guess that's why they say a layout is never finished. Our tunnel looks pretty good, doesn't it? and the viaduct doesn't look bad either. We added a fourth loop by using a jigsaw to cut small tunnel openings on the side of the two by four framework and laying track on a one by four board under the table. So that gave us two double O loops and five HO loops. The key was getting three loops on that 12 inch wide shelf. By using different backdrops, we can easily change the look and the mood of the layout. Building a layout is a fun family activity. There's something to do for everyone, and it's really not that hard. You learn how to measure and cut wood, how to wire, drill, and how to make and paint scenery. Even though this is an HO layout, many of the things we did could be applied to any gauge layout. When you build the layout, you create your own little world of fun. Try it, you'll like it.